What's up, you two? Capital G here. Got some exciting duels for you guys to check out. Our first duel is going to show you guys the absolute pinnacle of what the Blue Asgard Dragon deck can do. And it has one of the highest ceilings in Yu-Gi-Oh! Maybe it has the highest ceiling. Well, outside of like an FTK or something like that. It is an incredibly stupid and solid turn one board. So you guys exactly, or you guys will see exactly what I'm talking about and what he's working with. He's dueling against Dinos. Um, don't ask me why. It's a 57 card dinosaur deck with a uh, danger bigfoot but whatever anyways obviously your main objective when playing blue eyes guard dragons is to get to dark matter dragon like super fast get number 95 because it can help you get things like destrudo in the graveyard amorphish goliath all your powerful dragon monsters he is going to go for some link plays here land Falinkus into a couple of guard dragons and some in red eyes starting this metal from his deck and now he's pretty much in a good position goes for triple verse dragon and then goes into dark matter dragon uh part two so so you're seeing that he uh, is getting the Amorphic Goliath. His opponent gets rid of Pankatrops which I thought was weird. I would be like, why would you, why, would, why not keep Pankatrops? Because it would be in way to out your opponent's board. But if you feel like your opponent's going to have answers for it, I can't, it kind of makes sense. So he's going to drop that uh, Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. But uh, believe me, that is just the tip of the iceberg. He is just getting started with these ridiculous plays. Activates a copy of, um, that is, oh man, what's the name of that card? I'm forgetting it. Uh, Return of the Dragon Lords. Yeah, Return of the Dragon Lords. Even takes the card out of his opponent's hand with Chaos Dragon Levenir, dropping the Titanic Galaxy number 38 and then opts to go for a number 90 galaxy eyes photon lord so i mean based on this board alone I would say that this board is quite incredible, but you know that Amorphic Goliath is just going to make it a little better during the standby phase. And now when you look at this board, I mean, these are the type of boards that are pretty much auto win where your opponent will not be able to use uh, their extra deck unless it's for an Amorphic Monster. Also, you got the number 90 and the number 38 for negation. Plus, you have the Hot Red Dragon Archie and Abyss, so you have three negations plus no extra deck. But his opponent might be able to play out of this. And uh, he did actually, <laughs> because of the Dark Matter Dragon, he did actually get Giant Rex on board, which might actually help him a lot here. He's going to let him resolve Obi Raptor. Personally, I think I might have just negated the Ovi Raptor because that allowed him to get a Kaiju. He's going to Kaiju his opponent. Then he's going to go for Doka. And uh, Doka is going to be a really key player in this turn. So what it allows him to do is go for Double Evolution Pill. His opponent obviously is not trying to let that resolve. So he's just going to go ahead. He's going to activate Titanic Galaxy. But then Doka is like, I'm going to negate you. And then number 90 says, wait a minute, bro. I'm going to negate the Doka. Doka says, nope, I'll negate you back. And then Hot Red Dragon Archer. Abyss finally says I'll negate everything and that is a chain link six so basically I think we just saw five negates <laughs> used in one chain <laughs> ultimately the player at the bottom does have his card uh, negated but it doesn't matter because he does have that last copy of Tyr Tyranno in his hand and uh, I mean as long as his giant Rex comes back it's basically just GG his opponent does scoop it up if you guys are wondering why he simply, uh, well, why he decides to scoop it up, it's because all he would have to do is activate Conductor Tyranno's effect. His opponent has already used all of his negations, and then Conductor Tyranno can simply attack over these monsters and do a thousand damage for each one. He did already use Destrudo, which cut him down to 4,000 life points. So if he attacks over these four monsters, excuse me, five monsters on board, he actually just has game, let alone the Conductor Tyranno could just attack over everything. Maybe he should have summoned it to, to here, to Skull Dread's link point. I'm not sure that it actually matters. I don't think that it did matter in any significant way. Anyway, second duel is actually going to be one featuring a very strange Marincess build. And uh, you can take this duel with a huge grain of salt because <laughs> he's playing against a really like kind of amateurist build of red eyes. It's not going to really do anything, but it does show you some of the cool plays that you can do with Marincess. Me personally, I actually do want to play this deck IRL. I'm super excited about Marincess, but I would play Paleozoic Marincess. I think it's the most like consistent. And the Paleos and Marincess, or a Swap Frog and Marincess, like work really well. Seahorse and Swap Frog, they work naturally together so you guys will see him go for seahorse seahorse is a one card link three which is actually super nice you end up with seahorse right back in your hand so it definitely is a really nice play now he's using a copy of i think it's is it sign that backdoor or back uh yeah sign that backdoor and this card is i mean it's kind of a janky card but in marin says it's not actually half bad because essentially what you do is you banish one of your cybers monsters until your next turn and you add a cyber monster from your deck to your hand that has less attack so if you use this on the link three you can tutor yourself a copy well you're already gonna have seahorse but you can get the other 
Baron's Test Monster. And when this comes back, you can actually attack directly. You guys will see it in the following turn what exactly the play is because it's actually kind of spicy. It's a dirt play, but it definitely works. His opponent doesn't do anything, and that's nice because it allows him to go for Baron's Test Seahorse. Banisher and then summon Big Fish straight from his hand. That is Super Ancient Deep Sea Cola Kiff. Now, this is the guy that used to be played in like Fish OTK back in the 5Ds era. If you guys don't know about it, you discard a card and you can summon four fish monsters straight from your deck. Now, I would have personally liked to see him go into some totally awesome C or something like oh no, wait, I'm trolling. He can't go into totally awesome because uh these are level two fish monsters and not aqua. <laughs> Maybe he could have went into uh Bahamut Shark and then summon totally awesome that way. Okay, that would have worked, but instead he's gonna go for Mist Star Boy and some Link plays, and it definitely makes sense. You guys will see that his opponent really isn't doing anything. He had Monster Reborn, so maybe he could have tried. Is there anything big in his graveyard? He would have been close to having game here. I don't think it would have been exactly game, but he is going to go into another copy of the Link 3, Marbled Rock, and I believe in the following turn, you guys will see him use the copy of Sign at Backdoor. Actually, it's going to be during his opponent's turn, so what you do with Sign at Backdoor in the Marin Test deck, and again, this is like a little, this is just a for fun play. I would not recommend this for like competitive when these guys are released, but you actually banish your marble rock and then you add a copy of c star from your deck to your hand and c star is a card where you can have multiple copies of it and it actually works so the marble rock comes back you use c star once you see star again and then keep in mind you can actually add the c star back to your hand with the copy of marble rock and it does let you attack directly so basically you can attack your opponent for 4600 it's kind of a nice little cheese big damage play i think that um it's kind of cool because the uh, copy of sign at backdoor does let you tutor for your copy of a C, or a C star, excuse me, and then again, you can use both of your C stars in one turn and still add one of them from your hand for Marble Rock in case you want to use Marble Rock's effect, which does require a discard. So, just something to kind of think about uh, if you're building Marincess. Again, I would not recommend this build of Marincess, I would definitely recommend that you play the Paleo one. I think that uh, <laughs> it is much more consistent, but just something to think about if you are going to mess around with this archetype. So, hopefully, you guys enjoyed the duels. If you did, give the video a thumbs up thank you guys for watching as always subscribe if you have not already and turn on that notification bell for daily videos